So continuing on our uh, lessons about rotational motion, um, we just like force had the anal analog of torque and momentum has the analog of angular momentum. Um, energy, specifically kinetic energy, uh, will have a rotational analog as well. So, rotational kinetic energy. <clears throat> so for the, what we'll call translational kinetic energy, which is just linear kinetic energy. We had, represented that with the variable t and it was one half m v squared. So for rotational kinetic energy, we just want the analogs of those things. So the analog for mass in rotational systems is the moment of inertia, and then the analog to velocity is angular velocity omega. So this is the rotational energy for something that is spinning. Okay, so a couple things to think about. Uh, so what if you had something that's rolling and, or what if it's spinning and moving, which is a type of rolling? What if, So rolling, I'm talking about like a ball or a cylinder rolling. And you can imagine something that's rolling. It would have some velocity in this direction and some angular velocity that's rotating. So we have some ball sitting at rest, let's say. So at rest, so V equals zero and omega equals zero. So it's not gonna be moving or rotating. <clears throat> in linear motion, in order to have some velocity greater than zero, so to go from V equals zero to some velocity greater than zero, you need an acceleration. And to give something an acceleration, you need a force. So similarly, if something is not spinning and you want it to start spinning, you need an angular acceleration. And the way to impart an angular acceleration is with the torque. So for something that's rolling, what is that torque? So in most cases, it's going to be the frictional force. So force of friction. So if this is the direction of the velocity, then your friction force would be in the opposite direction. And if it's rotating about this axis in the middle, now you have a radius R. And if you wanted to know the torque, you would do R cross F. And you would get R, which is the radius of the um, 
whatever object is rotating. And then force would be force of friction. And then assuming you did um, you know what the force of friction is, you could replace, or assuming you knew what the free body diagram looked like, you could replace this friction with mu times the normal force. And then using Newton's second law, you can figure out what the normal force is. So in order to have something that's rolling, you need to have a force that is causing it to roll and that force has to be acting some distance away from the axis of rotation so that it's generating a torque. Okay, so if we want to look at the total kinetic energy of something rolling, you would have T total equals T either linear or translational plus T rotational equals one half MV squared plus one half I omega squared. Okay, so if you had values for all of these things, you could uh, just plug in numbers and calculate what the total kinetic energy was. But if instead you weren't given the values and everything is left in variable form, uh, there is some simplification that we can do. The reason that simplification is going to happen is for two reasons. So let's say that we take a solid sphere as our rotating or our rolling object. So the moment of inertia would be two fifths. Two fifths m r squared, where this is a sphere of radius r. Okay. So we could replace our i with one half times two fifths m r squared times omega squared. And now the other substitution that we can make is that omega is v over r. So if we plug that in for the omega here, we get t total is one half m v squared plus one half times two fifths m r squared times mega, which is v over r squared. Okay, so I'm going to start canceling some stuff. So this two cancels with that two. So we're left with one fifth m r squared and then v squared over r squared. But these r squareds cancel, and you're left with 1 half mv squared plus 1 fifth mv squared. And so then you can combine those two fractions. So 1 half would be 5 tenths, and 1 fifth would be 2 tenths. So that would be 7 over 10 mv squared the total rotational energy, or the total kinetic energy of this rolling ball. So for a lot of things that are rotating, especially if they are whatever axis of rotation they're rotating about has a 
is a circle, so like a sphere or a cylinder, uh, you can do this kind of substitution and simplify your total uh, kinetic energy to include both the translational and rotational energy into just one term like this. And so one more uh, note, and this is more about kind of vocabulary, is if we say that something is rolling without slipping, uh, this is just another way of saying that energy is conserved. So in the example I gave here, this is an example of rolling without slipping. So just keep note of this kind of vocabulary and know that rolling without slipping means that energy is conserved. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Peep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.